I've got COVID. Wet sand. I'm a genius. This looks like something that Ant and Deck would try and feed you on I'm a Celebrity. Bake off if you're watching, I would make a great contestant. Hello and welcome back to my channel. I know that you were probably expecting Vlogmas week three, but um, I started to film it and then I have managed to, after two years of avoiding it, caught COVID. So my Vlogmas would have been incredibly boring because I've literally just sat here and done nothing all week. Um, so instead, I thought as I finally got the November Bake Off box, that this week I would just do that for you guys instead. I will do Vlogmas next week. You'll just be missing out this week while I'm not allowed to leave my house. So let's just get on with it. As I said, we are doing the November Bake Off box. And this is the first Bake Off box that I filmed in the new house. So you are gonna have to excuse the general mess, um, setup, lighting. I'm kind of just getting used to it. The kitchen is not done yet, so uh, it's not great and neither's the light. So you just have to allow it and accept that it'll still be fun because we're still gonna be making sticky toffee pudding because that is the recipe this week, this month. Um, I had a lot of problems with this month's Bake Off, um, to be honest. The fact that the December box is the final box ever is probably a good thing because I've, I've reached the end of my tether <laughs> with them. So obviously I've moved and I changed my address and it was all confirmed. But they still sent this box to my old address. So whatever, they've done that before. It's the second time that's happened with me because I've moved twice in the last like six months. They, I emailed them. They're really great. Their customer service is actually really good. I emailed them saying, you've sent the box to the wrong address. They said, no worries, we'll send you a new one to the new address. Um, and then about 10 days went by and I still hadn't received it. So I emailed them again, like, okay, where is it then? Cause it's like midway through December. And then literally the day that I emailed them, um, it turned up at my front door. But, and they email me back saying, oh, I will send you another one. So I've now got three of these. One of them is at home, which is like 200 miles away for me. So it wasn't a case of I could just pop back and get it. It's 200 miles away. Um, and I wanted to film this video. Um, but I now have two of these. So that's gonna be someone's Christmas present. You're welcome. Anyway, enough rambling from me. So as I said, we are making Sticky toffee pudding with creme anglaise. Um, why I'm doing, I'm doing this today because I'm bored and I have nothing else to do, but realistically I live alone and I'm not allowed to leave my house for uh, five more days. So that's a lot of sticky toffee pudding that I'm gonna be eating. In the box this month, we are provided with chopped pitted dates, self-raising white flour, light, muscovado sugar um and then pure oh two don't know why they why just said big one well, two vials of pure bourbon vanilla extract um to complete this recipe you also needed to buy 190 grams of unsalted butter 360 ml of double cream eight eggs so you need three whole eggs and five more egg yolks and then 200 ml of whole milk. So again, quite a lot of extra ingredients that you needed to buy. And the tool this month, you know, as every month goes when we talk about the tool that you get, it's a whisk um, and something that you need to complete this is a very large tray of a specific like depth, um, which I don't have. I'm actually using a ceramic dish for it, as you'll see in a minute. But on the Bake Off website, you can buy the exact tray that you need to make this recipe. So my, oh, someone at the door. I was saying, um, 
You can buy the exact tray that you need to make this recipe on the Bake Off Boxes website. And basically my point, as usual, is most people have a whisk. I think I might actually have a whisk. And as someone yeah, who has just moved house and doesn't have very much stuff, even I still have a whisk. So, oh well, we move. I'm just saying they could have provided that tin that most people probably don't have because it's of a very specific like depth and size. Anyway. So the first thing that it wants you to do is grease your baking tin. And as I said, I don't have a baking tin. And this is what I'm planning on using. <laughs> it's currently got my leftover pasta bake in it. So you'll have to bear with me while I wash this up. And um, yeah. Another thing that I am yet to buy is scales. So we need 220 grams of sugar and this is 470 grams. So I'm gonna have to use these little measuring spoons to measure absolutely everything out in this recipe. Because again, I can't go out and buy scales. So we need 14 scoops of this one and then two of this one. And that is like 220 grams. And this is so gonna take much longer than I was expecting this recipe to take me to make. So you add three tablespoons of water to this as well. And the description says, um, mix it until it looks like wet sand, which is lovely. Um, so I've done that. And then I think we just kind of let it bubble away in here. And then we add cream and butter, which again, I'm gonna have exactly the same problem with measuring out because cream, for this recipe you need 360 ml cream and they only sell cream in 300 ml or 600 ml. So I've had to buy 600 ml of cream for that extra 60 ml I needed and I won't, I won't use this, like I'm not gonna drink the cream. Maybe I'll put it in some pasta or something. Butter, luckily most butter has these like 50 gram markings on them. So hopefully it won't be too difficult to measure that out. So I think it's done. I'm just gonna go for it, to be honest. If it makes a horrible mess, great. Oh, she's... And then it wants me to add the butter. God, she wasn't happy with, with that. That was snow. What a vibe. And then we just mix in the butter and hope, hope that the butter melts into it, I suppose. I'm just, at this point, just hoping I didn't burn the caramel because it just smelled like, just bubbling away. And it smelled like burning. It actually says, return the pan to the heat and add a bit of the vanilla extract which I am gonna eyeball because I can't be able to measure it out. This is why I'm bad at baking because I don't measure anything out properly. I just chuck it in and hope for the best. And that is why Bake Off, if you're watching, I would make a great contestant. Next is to make the actual like pudding itself. And preheat the oven, next step, so that's done, to 180. And it wants me to put these, put the dates, all of them, yeah. Uh, doesn't say, so I'm gonna go with all of them. And then, as you can hear, the kettle is boiled. We're gonna put 350 ml of boiling water over them, and then they just leave them to chill on the side for 15 minutes to like soften up. And I found myself a measuring jug in the form of a protein shaker because I noticed that it does actually have things on the side. So this is the best way that I'm going to get 350 mil. Um, and it'll do. And if that is not, you know, innovation, intuitive, whatever you want to call it, then, oh well. There we go. If you ask me, I'm a genius. 
Oh, that smells incredible. And then, it says while we're doing that, we're gonna get my mixing bowl out. And <laughs> it says, use an electric hand mixer, which um, I actually now, after all these months, don't have, because I've moved, I was always using my mum's. And I know for a fact that mum has got me one for Christmas. But considering it's currently the 18th of December, I'm not gonna get that for another week and a half. Another week, ooh. So, it's just gonna be pure manpower today. And if it all goes wrong, it all goes wrong. So step nine is add the whole eggs one at a time. If the mixture begins to curdle, add a spoonful of the self-raising flour. So that's fine, and then add the rest. So it is all of the self-raising flour. That was a mild panic. We're all good, don't even worry about it. This hack of adding like a little bit of flour um, while you're mixing the eggs in is actually genius. Like why didn't I know about this before? I remember when I used to make cakes like as a kid, I would always just add all the eggs in and it would look like some weird gross mess like someone just threw up in the bowl. And if I'd known back then that all I needed to do was add a little bit of flour that I was going to do in a minute anyway, genius. My cakes might have been so much better. We're just <laughs> max mashing that up. That's so gross. Oh. Nice. This looks like something that Ant and Deck would try and feed you on I'm a Celebrity. So once I've got my baby food textured dates. They're gonna get slopped in here. <laughs> nice. Um, that's actually disgusting. And then we mix it all together. Here we have my sticky toffee pudding ready to go in the oven. It says it needs 30 to 35 minutes in the oven. So good, cool. Let's do that. So it says after it's been in the oven for 30 minutes to take it out and pour half of the caramel or toffee syrup that we made on top of it and then put it back in the oven for five minutes. So that is what we're doing. I don't have any oven gloves, but I have these really cute Christmas tea towels. So oh, she's, she's looking a bit burnt. Whoops. Whoopsies. It's fine. It says just half. It's proper sizzling away. Back in the oven, just for literally five minutes. In fact, I'm gonna turn the oven off. So, once the cake is done, or the pudding, whatever you wanna call it, we're heating up 200 ml of milk. It says whole milk, but I don't wanna drink whole milk. I generally don't really drink milk anyway, but I will because I've got leftover. So I bought semi-skimmed milk because I'm happy drinking that. So hopefully that doesn't make too much difference. 200 ml and then another 200 ml of the double cream. Um, teaspoon of vanilla, mixing all that together. And then basically we're mixing five egg yolks and 50 grams of sugar. What I wanna know, you know when you split eggs, when you're making like meringue or something, getting any yolk in the whites makes like a huge difference. If you get whites in the yolk bit, like how much of a difference does that make? Cause like there is a bit of like whites in this. Does it really matter that much? Basically, once the mixture's warm, we're gonna pour that into here very slowly cause we don't want scrambled eggs. Which is probably what I'll do. I think that's what they all do on Bake Off, isn't it? You make creme anglaise, you end up with scrambled eggs, and it would be me. So it says to take it out of the oven and then put it on a wire rack. It doesn't really specify if I'm supposed to take it out the tray. Like in the photo, it's on the tray on the wire rack. So am I supposed to. And even in the photo, like it looks like you serve it out of the tray. So why would you put it on a wire rack? Like that's not doing anything. I guess we leave it like that. I might portion it up and I'm gonna do what my mum does. My mum makes sticky toffee pudding all the time because it's her favorite. Um, 
she makes a big one and then puts it in the freezer and obviously i'm this it says serves eight people i'm not going to eat eight people's worth of sticky toffee pudding i mean i could but i won't um i think i've worked out i've got five more days stuck here so i'm gonna leave five more days worth out i'm gonna leave five portions out and then put three portions in the freezer and i can have them another time because I don't like wasting it, but I also don't want to eat all of it because it's probably really sweet. So I'm going to portion it up and then do that. So I'm going to pour just like a little bit of this over the top. That looks so good. I am a pro. Yes. And then I'm a little bit worried about this, like, to be honest, I feel like it's supposed to be thicker kind of smells like it's burnt or like egg um so i might just put it in a thing on the side so my creme anglaise i've just tried to like get a little spoonful and it's it's definitely got lumps in it so i think i've cut up that so we're gonna just put like a little bit on the side here you know just for visual purposes but like in terms of actual will i be eating it the answer is probably no. And here we have it. Absolutely incredible. So here we have the finished product. And I don't know if the creme anglaise is actually meant to look like that. So we are going to try it with both that and the sauce. Going to give it a good go. Cheers. Yeah, no, I think I killed it. How about let's have a bit? Let's have a bit without that in it. Mm, whoops. Mm. That is absolutely incredible. Maybe I will eat all eight portions. Who knows? We'll see. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. As I said, there is actually only one more box after this one so you'll only see one more of these videos other than that's it for bake off box unless if you guys want to see me like continuing i'll just find some random recipes on the internet maybe do baking like bake with me or something let me know if you want to see that in the comments don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already and thanks for watching i'll see you guys next week which will be the final installment of vlogmas sorry that you didn't get vlogmas this week but i've got covid so allow it thank you anyway that's it i'll see you guys next week bye